In this video, we'll be going over radiographic positioning of the mandible. Essential projections of the mandible include the PA for the rami, PA axial for the rami, axiolateral and axiolateral obliques, AP axial towns view, and cemento vertex. For the PA view, to visualize the mandibular rami, position the patient prone or seated upright facing the vertical bucky. Rest the patient's forehead and nose on the IR to place the OML perpendicular to the IR plane. The MSP should also be perpendicular to the IR, with the CR perpendicular to exit through the acanthian. Center the IR and the CR with a collimated field of 8 by 10 inches. The same positioning criteria exists for the PA axial mandibular rami but the CR should be directed 20 to 25 degrees cephalad to exit the acanthian. Notice how the articulations of the mandibular condyles are better visualized with the angled axial view. The axiolateral and axiolateral oblique mandible have variable positioning criteria based on the portion of the mandible that needs to be visualized. Most routines include a general survey view, but keep in mind the area of interest and consult a radiologist to determine which positioning option or options to utilize for this view. The patient should be seated upright with an anterior oblique position. Patient may also be semi-prone or semi-supine. Start with the mandible lateral with IPL perpendicular to the IR and keep the mouth closed with teeth together. Extend the neck to place the mandibular body parallel with the transverse axis of the IR. This is where variation of positioning will depend on area of interest. Adjust rotation of the head to place the area of interest parallel to the IR. To visualize the ramus, keep the head in the true lateral position, shown here in green. To better visualize the body, rotate the patient's head 30 degrees towards the IR, as shown here in blue. And for the symphysis, rotate the head 45 degrees towards the IR, as shown here in orange. These variations basically place the part of interest closest to the image receptor and correspond with each section's approximate angle from the MSP. So if you find a fracture or point of interest that the radiologist would like to see more clearly on your images, simply vary the amount of rotation to place that point of interest closest to the IR. Another aspect of these views that may vary is the amount of CR angulation. The goal is to free the side of interest from superimposition of the opposing side. The CR can be angled 25 degrees cephalic to pass directly through the mandibular region of interest. Depending on your patient's body habitus and positioning method that you've elected, this steep tube angle can sometimes cause the shoulder to superimpose the mandible. For this reason, you may use a combination of head tilt towards the IR and a cephalic tube angle. The combination of tilt and tube angle should equal approximately 25 degrees. For example, if you tilt the head 10 degrees towards the IR, you would only need a 15 degree cephalic tube angle to present the anatomy appropriately here. Center the IR to the CR and use a collimated field of 8 by 10 inches. For the AP axial town method, place the patient in the upright seated or supine position and ensure the OML is perpendicular to the IR. You may also use the IOML with greater tube angle. If the OML is used, place a 35 degree caudal angle to enter the glabella. If the IOML is used, angle 42 degrees caudal to the glabella. The increased angle compared to the traditional 30 degree Towns angle demonstrates the condyloid processes, which should be symmetrical and demonstrated without rotation. Check your department protocols to determine if mental points should be visualized in this view. The SMV projection is the same as all other SMV views covered up until this point in the course. Hyperextend the neck to place the IOML parallel to the IR and center midway between the angles of the mandible. Ensure the MSP is perpendicular to prevent tilt and the entire mandible should be demonstrated. Ensure the perpendicular plate is vertical to eliminate rotation of the cranium. 
While the Panorex view requires special equipment and is not covered on the ART registry exam, we will briefly discuss positioning criteria here. The patient must be standing upright to use this equipment with the teeth in the bite guard. The IOML should be parallel to the floor, and the patient should have a vertical posture with shoulders relaxed as far down as possible. The tube and IR rotate around the patient's head, and these positioning requirements should eliminate collision of the tube or IR with the patient's shoulders, which could cause injury and or a repeat image to be required.